Welcome to Electron Line. Here's an example that is similar to the previous example, except that instead of throwing the object straight at a horizontal direction, we're now pushing the object off the top of the building, where the height is equal to 50 meters. Notice that it's an angle of 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. That's the initial direction of the projectile. So if we're going to find the final velocity of the projectile when it hits the ground over here, what we're going to need to do first is find the x and the y components up here. So finding the x component, v initial in the x direction is equal to v initial times the cosine of 30 degrees. And here to find the initial velocity in the y direction, we get v initial in the y direction is equal to v initial times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, for the x direction, that would be equal to 40 times the cosine of 30 degrees, which is equal to, using a calculator, 40 times 30, take the cosine, equals 34.64 meters per second. So we'll keep a few extra decimal places. 34.64 meters per second in the x direction. In the y direction, of course, the sine of 30 is a half, so that would be equal to half of 40, or 20 meters per second. Now that we have the initial velocities, now we can find the final velocity here. Remember again that we're going to have a horizontal component, v final in the x direction, and we're going to have a vertical component, v final in the y direction. And just like before, the horizontal component at the end will be exactly the same as the horizontal component in the beginning, which means that v final in the x direction will still have to be a 34 0.64 meters per second. That will not change throughout its entire flight. But what about the velocity in the y direction? Well again we can do it in two ways. We can first find time in the air and then find the final velocity in the y direction or we can take this equation right here and solve for the final velocity in the y direction without knowing the time. So with no time available we can take that second equation and write that v final in the y direction is equal to the square root of, because we're taking the square root of both sides, v initial in the y direction squared plus 2 times g times the change in the height. Plug in the numbers, that is equal to the square root of v initial in the y direction, that's 20 meters per second squared, minus 2 times the minus 9.8, whoop, that should be an 8, 8 times a minus 50. The change in the height is a minus 50 because we start at a height of 50 and we come down to 0. Working this out with a calculator, let's see here, so that would be 980 plus 400. Take the square root of that and it would be 37.15 meters per second. So the final velocity in the y direction is equal to 37.15 meters per second. All right, that's not the final velocity, that's only the final velocity in the y direction. Now we go back to over here and realize that the final velocity is simply equal to the square root of v final in the y direction squared plus v final in the x direction squared. We're using Pythagorean theorem here, which is equal to the square root of v final in the y direction is 30, oh, wait a minute, because you're going to say, well, wait a minute, shouldn't that be a minus? And in this case, of course, that is a minus 37.15 meters per second because it's, after all, going in a negative direction. But here, what we're going to get is we're going to get 37.15, oops, no. Well, I put the y direction first, so we'll square that, plus 20 squared. Again, it doesn't matter if this is minus or plus because we're squaring it. And so we get v final is equal to 1380 plus 400, take the square root, and we get 42.2 meters per second. Now that's the magnitude of the final velocity. We don't have the direction yet, so to find the direction, let's call it theta. Theta can be found by taking the arctangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side which is equal to the arctangent of the opposite side of the angle would be v final in the y direction 
over the adjacent side would be v final in the x direction, which in this case is the arctangent of v final in the y direction is 37.15 divided by x direction that would be 34.64. And again, you might wonder, well, why did I use a positive 37 instead of a negative 37? All we're doing here is finding the magnitude of the angle. We don't care what the directions are. This is simply a ratio of the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side. And the length, of course, cannot be negative. You can't have a negative length. So we get a positive 37. Plugging that into the equation, 37.15 divided by 34.64. Take the arctangent of that, and we get 47 degrees. Which means that in this case, the final velocity is 42 2 meters per second at an angle of 47 degrees below the horizontal. And that's how we find the final velocity of a projectile starting at an angle when it finally reaches the ground. That's how it's done.